Okay, thank you, Martin. Hello, my name is Antanas Ronis, and in my today's presentation, I will give a brief overview of how the Best for Soil project was promoted in the Northeast region. And then I will explain what kind of challenges faces our farmers and what can we recommend for them to get better results. And also, since 2023, a new financial period will begin and the new requirements for the farmers will be applied due to Green Deal policy, where inputs of pesticides and fertilizers should be reduced. And I have a prepared very short information on what our politicians and farmers agreed on in respect to get healthier soils, soil for Lithuanian farmers. Uh, best for soil facilitators from Latvia, Estonia, Poland and Lithuania successfully managed to organize the seminars and the meetings. And due to COVID-19 pandemics, most events were organized remotely. Also, a year ago, a regional workshop was organized, which was very successful too. The event attracted more than 800 participants from four countries. And from my experience, I find out that the farmers are more interested in the video reports and leaflets, uh, while the pathogen and nematode databases are more interesting for the agricultural advisors and researchers. So, which tool, tools offered by Best for Soil can be useful in our region? And basically, I think all of them. But the greater popularity of each tool in the region is more determined by the prevailing farm specializations. In Lithuania, for instance, cash crop farm prevails where just a few plant species are grown. And this is mainly due to the economic situation where wheat and soil, where all citrate crop are the most profitable to grow. And consequently, these crops return to the same field too early. For instance, all citrate or the same crop is being grown for a few seasons in a row, like uh, wheat after wheat. And as a result, there is a clear trend toward a rapid decline of organic matter in the soil and the organic of organic matter can be restored, restored uh, by adding of manure, but uh, its quantities are insufficient as livestock farms are declining. There are some farms that use poultry manure as an option, but again, it's not available everywhere. And in this, gra this graph shows the average crop structure in Lithuania over the last four years. And we see what cereals are being grown on the area which consists of 61% from the total acreage. And as the statistical data shows, plants would consume more organic matter predominate in comparison with those who increase the organic matter in the soil. And this trend is not what we need. So a good alternative could be growing of catch crops, but the area is not large enough although the growing is financially supported. And in the graph on the right side, you can see the proportion of the area dedicated for cereals and for catch crops. As the growing of catch crop is being supported, therefore, over the last four years, the number of farms who grow the catch crops increased almost three times, and the area of catch crops also is steadily increasing and now reaches over 35,000 hectares. The reasons why the growing of catch crop is not yet very popular are the lack of information about benefits. There is also lack of proper equipment. Other farmers says that seed prices are too high or a lack of time and so on. And uh, the following table shows the most common plant sequences in our farms. And crops listed in yellow column are being harvested, and crops listed in a green column are being sown in late summer or autumn. And we see that there are some suitable options which farmers should consider in order to improve their soil. And winter all rape is one of the earliest crops to be harvested, so there are a lot of time left until the next crop sowing. And if a farmer is going to sow winter wheat after winter wheat, then the time for growing catch crop enough too. But the most suitable time for growing catch crop is when uh, spring crops are going to be grown after winter crops. So in this case, uh, catch crops uh, would be fully beneficial as it catches and stores nutrients 
protects the soil from erosion and helps uh, to increase organic matter. And in addition to that, farmers are given an additional financial support uh, for growing catch crops and keeping them until the spring. And catch crop provide a lot of benefits and I will tell you more about some of them in my next slides. And also I would like to emphasize what the pathogen and nematode schemes uh, offered by Best for Soil are very useful too, because Best for Soil offers a long list of catch crops suitable for crop rotations. Therefore, it is useful to use these tools so that we do not multiply uh, disease pathogens or nematodes. By growing catch crop, the organic matter in the soil can be increased. The, the intensity of biomass mineralization in the soil depends on the chemical content of the biomass. The basic rule is that the faster the incorporated biomass decomposes, the less humus is formed. And according to the intensity of decomposition, plant species and the biomass can be divided into three groups. Uh, the biomass that decomposes quickly, where carbon and nitrogen ratio is less than 24, uh, biomass that decomposes slowly, carbon and nitrogen ratio higher than 24, and the biomass where decomposition and humification processes are balanced, and where carbon and nitrogen ratio is close to 24. The composition process is also influenced by the way how the biomass is incorporated into the soil, by tea plowing or by shallow harrowing, catch crop, can also be left on the soil surface during the winter, but it's better to roll down. It helps to break down the biomass faster. Soil erosion is, going, is a growing problem as cereals have started to grow in hilly areas or in light soils where perennial grasses used to grow. And I remember what 20 years ago when I was a student, so we were told that winter erosion doesn't exist in Lithuania. But now this is an obvious fact, especially in the spring, when even stronger than five meter per second wind blows soil particles. And in addition to wind, heavy rain and water adds to erosion as well, especially in the hilly fields. Therefore, it is important not to leave the soil in the winter and early spring without vegetation or crop remains. In this slide, we see a field where white mustard is left over winter and if there is no in the winter then the catch crop can be left upright but if there is risk of having winter without snow then it's better to roll down the catch crop and as i mentioned it winter also trape is being harvested uh, early in the second half of july and uh, they are a great prayer crop after which possible to sow both winter or summer crops and there is enough time before the next crop sowing, which can be used for growing catch crops. And if in the winter, all citrape crop, our researchers recommend growing white clover as at the same time. In this case, a fertilizer spray can be used to spread seeds of white clover. And uh, the main requirement is that the soil must contain enough moisture. Otherwise, the germination rate would be poor. And in this picture, we see the impact of white clover where wheat biomass decreased from six to 18 times depending on the technology used. And in this picture, you see the field after three, three weeks after harvesting on the right side without white clover. There are many weeds and volunteer plants, plants germinated. On the left side, a huge biomass of white clover. And also it is not necessary to note that white clover is a perennial plant Therefore, it must be destroyed by tillage or herbicides before the next crop sowing. Otherwise, it will block germination of the main crop. Soil compaction is largely related to the reduction of organic matter in the soil and use of heavy machinery. And catch crops can help here again. The roots of catch crop by growing deep into the soil reduce the density of the soil and increases its volume. As a result, more air enters the soil and water is better absorbed. In the looser soils, the roots of the plants penetrate into the deeper layers of the soil and increase the nutrient area. 
Uh, different growths and different tillage methods have different effect on soil density and the properties of the soil genesis also have an influence. Results of our researchers shows that soil density can be reduced by growing catch crops too. The lines indicate the range when the soil density is low, which is optimal for plant growth. Uh, when the moderate density of the soil, the growth of plant roots becomes limited. But if with enough moisture, plant growth is, uh, would, wouldn't be affected. But the negative effect would be more obvious in the drier period. And soil density of 1.63 grams per cubic centimeter and higher are already harmful. And in this picture, we see that the high soil density was obtained by shallow plowing and direct sowing. But if there are very white clover is grown, when the soil density tended to decrease. Spread of diseases. Again, winter or, city, winter or spring cereals can be sown after winter or city rape and white clover crops. In this example, spring wheat was sowed as the following crop. And after harvest, it was investigated whether the contamination of grain, grains with the fungi of a fusarm species were different. And we can see that in many cases, in the fields where the white clover was grown, the contamination of spring wheat grains by fusarium fungi was lower. So statistically, the differences were not significant in all cases, but the trend is, is, is rather clear. As we know, what the new period of EU funding will begin in 2023, uh, where Green Deal policy requirements should be applied in each country. And it includes the reduction of pesticides and fertilizers. In Lithuania, politicians agreed on that at least 25% of, of their direct payments uh, sh should be shifted to achieve their sustainability goals. Farmers will have to apply higher than mandatory agri-environmental standards and farm practices. And after long discussion, five groups of eco-schemes were offered for Lithuanian farmers. And then this is basically done to involve farms from all farming groups. And, and here is a list of them, uh, horticulture and vegetable growing, changing preferable land to grassland and its maintenance. And here is a basic focus on peat soils, organic farming, and there is an ambition to increase the number of organic farms by 5% from the current eight to 13. Animal welfare, and the last eco scheme is proposed for cash crop farmers is a complex eco scheme in arable land. And the application of this eco scheme should be should provide the cash crop farmers to move towards more sustainable farming based on their higher agri environmental standards. And the following activities were proposed uh, crop rotation of higher standards. This is basically, basically it is enough to grow three crops, but if a farmer will decide to participate in this eco scheme, he should grow at least four crops. And there are no specific requirements for the minimum percentage area from the total acreage, but it will be forbidden to grow the same crop next year, only with one exception. If a farmer wants to grow the same crop again, then the cash crop should be grown for at least four weeks. And uh, again, growing of catch crops will be supported. And then there are some more activities. And the last activity proposed is uh, use of minimal tillage. And it's becoming more and more popular among the farmers in our country. So it was decided to support the farmers who use this kind of technology. So that's it what we wanted to talk about today. Thank you for your attention. Yes, thank you very much, much, and, and Thomas, thank you also for keeping the time. Um, <laughs> yes, it was a really nice talk of you. Um, and I wanted to, to ask you um, what, what, what have been your challenges regarding the project, regarding your um, also your, your tasks at uh, the last years, what were the, the grand challenges, you can say? in your research field, what do you want to share? 
I think the last, the, the, the biggest challenge uh, by working this project was that uh, due to the pandemic, it was impossible to organize the live meetings. So <laughs> we, we, we wanted to show a lot of things for, for our farmers, but in the fields, but we were unable. So we tried to, to shift to the remote e events and then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the best thing I think is was the biggest challenge. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, uh, I get it definitely. Okay, um, we will go on with the with the uh, questions from the audience. Again, a little reminder: uh, on the right side, you have the buttons event, agenda, and session. And if you click on the session button, then you uh, have the options of chat, and you have. Mm -hmm. uh, different others and on the right side you see like the f and a and here you put down the the questions so uh from vitalia actually we got a got a question what initiatives uh, farmers will get to join the eco scheme is one question from the chat so as i said about the 20 if we want to get uh, more money from the eu funds so they have to participate in the eco scheme and they will receive uh, 24 percent more money so they, if they want to increase their, their budget by 25%, they have to, to, to participate in, in, in these eco-schemes. So, but again, we have to, as I said, for example, we have to grow four crops instead of three. And then, then we have to take, to take more, more activities in regard mm -hmm. to have better environment and, 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 and better soil. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask, um... The next one from Bert, uh, which intercrop systems uh, can be applied in your country? So in, in my presentation, I, I talk about white clover, but if uh, but there is a white mustard is also very popular as a catch crop. And also there are a lot of mixtures of different uh, of uh, catch crop species. They are being sold by their companies. But again, their price is rather high, so the farmers not like to use them. So they prefer to, to grow a clover or, or let's say or red clover or white mustard, radish, and then like crops like this. Yeah, because you were just speaking of uh, white clover, there was also the question of um, if you need to use herbicides to get rid of the white clover was a special uh, question. Maybe you can have yeah. Yeah, share exactly. some words. Yeah, yes, exactly. <clears throat> because, <clears throat> sorry, white clover is a perennial grass. So if you would like to grow next crop in the same autumn or in the next spring, so you have to, to, to use herbicides, mm -hmm. so like glyphosides. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there was also, actually, maybe it was already answered. Maybe you want to add one or two things. There was also a question, question um, um, before implementing uh, the crops, um, what you do with the green menu? This was one question well, because... Uh, well, if uh, catch crop is left over winter, <clears throat> winter time, so in the springtime, it's very, it's very, they are very easy, easy breakable by the tillage methods. So you can use a shallow harrowing and you can easily incorporate in the soil and then you can drill other crops. So or for, for instance, if you have, let's say, a combined seed drill, which can harrow the field, the soil at the same time and drill. So you can just go to the field and by one passing, you can drill the crop. So it's not a problem at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, Ursula actually also uh, asked one, two questions actually. Um, what are the ways to maintain production on peat soils in this region? And the other question is how do you face conflicts around the different requirements like nature protection, production, fluid control, etc.? So, okay. first, yeah. uh, so, so as I mentioned it, so there is a policy, there, there is a requirement, but but the politicians want to 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 shift the peat soil to the to the grass again again. So because there are there are a lot of fields which are peat soils, and now farmers we grow cereals in in these soils, 
and so the politicians so decided to 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 give some money but the farmers they have to agree to to shift the soils again to the to the to the grasses mm -hmm. uh, and what was and the whole question, question was how do you face conflicts around the different requirements like nature production production fluid control and so on <laughs> it's a very nice question because i used to participate in in this in creating this eco scheme so and I saw that uh, the farmers they, they disagree, disagree in, and then they didn't want it to, to to adopt this eco scheme. So so yeah, it's not an easy task. So to find a let's say and use useful agreement, which can be useful for the farmers and for, for politicians. So it's also a, a, a constant debate between these two two groups, between the farmers and between politicians. So. It's not an easy task. Mm -hmm. And how widespread is um, no-till agriculture in Lithuania? That was Vitalia is asking that. Well, it's I can't say exactly the numbers, but it is it is popular. So I can say it is it is one third or maybe it's uh, fifty percent used in, in in arable land, but it it is it is popular. Mm -hmm. And another question by Pascal. Uh, do you have experience with crop termination by cutting it down and then covering the surface by e.g. plastic sheets to heat up the soil and air below it? Mm, I think no, no, I have no experience with that. <laughs> okay. Um, and by the way, it was also mentioned in the chat, Happy Independence Day. <laughs> it's Easter Day in, in Lithuania, as I read. Um, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just mentioned. Yeah, maybe a nice thing in these times to mention. <laughs> okay, um, thank you. So I would say we are finished with the questions. Thank you for your inspiring talk, Antanas. And we move on.